All right. Hello, guys. This is sharing your progress via social media. Create, share, grow, and repeat. My name is Molengo Akpo Asambe. I am an introvert artist. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I had not expected to come out in public, so I was trying to hide my identity. But since I had to speak, I figured I'll show who I am. Um, I am a 2D and 3D artist. I draw cartoons and illustrations. I work with motion graphics, uh, visual effects. I love movies, video game design, uh, cooking. I love chocolate, but uh, that's a personal uh, decision. Um, and anything tech, I basically I enjoy. So, as a as an introvert artist, I had a problem of uh, showing my work and actually getting it out into public. So the one thing is, I am not is a is a big thing that I had to overcome. Insert great person here. So as a human being, comparing myself to my peers and coworkers was a thing that I did all the time. Um, I didn't love it, but it's just something that that happened. Uh, I have friends who have won Emmys in visual effects, and others who have become big names in major gaming studios, and that was very frustrating to me when I would compare myself to them. But I'm not alone because a lot of people compare themselves to other people. It's just human nature. Uh, there have been plenty of successful people, both in the past and present, who we look up to for inspiration. Uh, people such as Steve Jobs, Picasso, or any famous creative person. Um, like the other day I watched the Lady Gaga uh, documentary, and it's just, there are people that do crazy amounts of inspirational work that it's very easy to compare yourself to. Um, but comparing and idolizing somebody else's skills and talents, although it can be this, it can actually be very destructive and it can lead to internal struggles of self-doubt, confidence, or even in some people, depression. So has anybody ever uh, done the the paper test, if they know what that is, with a squiggly line, where you, you draw a squiggly line, and then out of that squiggly line, you create something else. No one's ever done? All right, well, I actually brought paper, but <laughs> since no two of us. The idea of the squiggly line is the fact that you can basically create something out of no matter what that, that line looks like, that shape, you can create something interesting. So... The concept behind that is there's a myth that people that people think that uh, only special talented people um, or these genius people with superhuman talents are the ones who can create amazing pieces of art. Um, and the idea that that this is a thing is basically really just a myth. Most creative people uh, work in groups or find inspiration from a group. Um, the idea that most of these groups are just, it's more of an idea of these groups of being individual creatives, artists, curators, thinkers, a combination of all of the collective talent together. And those people then support each other, critique, they copy each other, some steal ideas, as well as contribute ideas. So creativity isn't something that just is a spark of lightning. It's something that's curated by the common group. Oh, let's see. So the quote here, creativity is not... Creativity is not a talent, it is a way of operating. So great work isn't created in a vacuum, but rather in some sense a collaboration of the individual minds connected to other minds. So being part of a larger group really has nothing to do with how smart or talented we are, but rather the ideas that we share, the connections that we can make, and the, 
the conversations that we can start. We need to get out of our heads and think for ourselves. We need to get out of our heads and think of ourselves as amateurs or enthusiasts. Um, I am passionate about art. So I, my work will reflect the art. So yes, it might not look great and it might not look as great as the person over there, but it's something that I've created. So this is Michelangelo and the uh, Sistine ch uh, Chapel. And if you look at the piece in the collective, it's a huge undertaking. It's something that most people even today would, would see that and say, how on earth did he get that done? But the reality is he didn't actually just, it took him four years to complete this, which in itself is a huge undertaking. But it wasn't the idea of just going in and saying, all right, I'll, I'll try and undertake this task all at once. But he worked on every individual piece. So the idea of trying to undertake something huge like that is kind of unrealistic. We should think of it more as if we rework our mind and the process of how we go about getting work, it can help uh, almost simplify and de-stress the situation. Um, the idea of starting and completing a task like this with huge implications on both the beginning and the end. So like I said, breaking it down into simpler pieces and working one day at a time uh, got him through this basically. Uh, but one thing that we can take advantage of that Michelangelo did not have is social media. We have that at our disposal. So imagine much like watching a director's cut of a favorite movie or getting behind uh, getting a behind the scenes view of your favorite production play or TV. Many of us would be following Michelangelo's Instagram feed if or his Twitter updates in, in 1508 if he had walked us through that design process, his trials, his errors, his success. So in this image, I, this is the one of the shots for Star Wars um, where J.J. Abrams is talking with the cast. And it kind of gives us, the viewer, a glimpse of like, oh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. They're giving us nuggets of something that is behind the scenes that we wouldn't have seen. So what keeps us from starting? Is it fear? Is it the myth that we're not creative enough? Or is it the idea that we're really not artists? Um, is it overcomplicating the process and creating it into something that it's, that it's larger than it actually is? Is it perfectionism, procrastination, fear of failure? Is it fear of success? There are a lot of lies that we tell ourselves. Uh, so there are a lot of, oh, sorry, skipped a. There are a lot of lies that we tell ourselves, um, like we're not good enough or we aren't able to finish a project. Um, but if we don't start, then, yeah, sorry. Uh, some lies also are we don't know where to start or we don't know where to post or what to post or the optimal time to post. Um, but if we, if we have a concept and expand the idea of being an amateur or an enthusiast, I think a lot of those uh, fears can start to go away. The reason that is, is the definition of an amateur is an enthusiast who pursues their work in the spirit of love, regardless of the potential for fame, money, or career. So the advantage of this over a professional is Amateurs really don't have anything to lose, um, and they're really willing to try anything. So amateurs aren't afraid to make mistakes or look at, re look at something uh, ridiculous and, and put it into the public. Uh, they don't hesitate to do work that others think will be silly or just plain stupid. So in the beginning, we don't have to be so worried about the end result. We should focus more on just keeping it simple and starting to build momentum um, as we go along the journey. So in this quote, if you work on something a little bit every day, you'll end up with something that is massive. 
this. So try to keep things small when you start out. Too many people try and do things all at once. As you develop a piece uh, and get better at it, then try new things as the skills improve and your confidence uh, increases. So S is for keep it simple. Uh, show your work and uh, or S is for show your work, uh, share something small every day. So the advantage we have right now is because of social media, there are many ways for us to show our work. Um, I right now I'm using a blog and I'm using Instagram. Um, part of that is because I'm trying to keep it simple. I am not trying to post things everywhere like Twitter, Facebook. There's, there's just way too much stuff and that can tend to bog it bog people down. So in, incorporating sharing into the process is a huge thing, but when we consistently uh, post bits and pieces of our work um, or, or show the f and show what we're working on, our thoughts and ideas behind those pieces, as well as what we're learning online, it helps slowly and often it helps gain an audience that we can leverage for fellowship feedback or, uh, or even patronage. So that's why just keeping it simple and, and letting that momentum build is a, is a good thing for when you're starting. Sharing the process is also a great way to attract people who might be interested in what you do and how you did it, uh, how you dealt with the ups and downs of putting your work and yourself out into the world, uh, into the world, sorry. So uh, you should share your work and share it often. Uh, this last quote, um, the stupidest, silliest, and tiny little creative act is still a creative act. So the idea behind that is even if you're putting out something small, you're still putting something out as opposed to not putting anything out at all. All right. So in the spirit of sharing my work and my process, um, I had decided to come up with a poster, which I don't know if you can see. So there was a poster that I, I had an idea for, and I was trying to think of PodCamp 2017 theme. So the first thing I did was I looked up some inspiration uh, using, uh, I, I did a flow chart, and I also used Pinterest. So I thought in the flow chart, which I should have probably showed here, but in the flow chart, I, sh I thought, PodCamp. What are some things about PodCamp and Pittsburgh that I can incorporate? So for me, I thought PodCamp en encompasses, well, it's in Pittsburgh. It deals with social media. It deals with blogs. It also incorporates a lot of different kinds of people coming into the city to learn about stuff. So in the 412, I did 412 because that's clearly Pittsburgh. I imprinted a, an image of the downtown city's map in there and you know PodCamp 2017. So I started off by um, one of the passions that we were that I've been working on are augmented reality projects. So I had thought, well let me try and incorporate augmented reality into this. So after I had come up with a flow chart and some interest of what the design would be, I laid that out and then I decided to come up with a concept. So the concept of incorporating people related to Pittsburgh, I started to just illustrate in, in my own style what I felt like bringing people together in the city. So, you know, we have like a, a tweet bot there. Um, I, I gave a lot of people iPods, uh, a lot of tech stuff. Halfway through, I, I just started to think, all right, I'm just going to throw in other random stuff, but still trying to keep Pittsburgh. We have uh, the penguin mascot there. I threw in Mr. Rogers and Daniel Tiger. Um, so just trying to like think what's Pittsburgh and incorporate that stuff in the poster design. From there, I did the... Uh, my final inking for the line art. Then I got a little over ambitious in my routine, in my uh, in my process. I was gonna illustrate every single one of these characters. 
Then I realized PodCamp was in a week, and I had 60 more characters to do. So I said, all right, well, maybe in a problem, we will uh, think this a different way. <laughs> so I went with a kind of two-tone color, trying to keep the, the black and yellow theme, which is also Pittsburgh, so black and gold, black and yellow. But um, in this, I went with a two-tone, and we played around with that. Uh, then I handed this off, the digital files, to my programmer. A lot of the projects we're using now are in Unity for Augment Reality. So from there, he put that in. And if you would like, you could see what that final thing looks like. Right here. So if you hold that up to the poster. Oh, that's cool. Your finger might be covering oh. the, uh... Yeah. All right. So with that, um, I'd like to thank you for uh, listening to my short lecture. I am the introverted artist. At, that's at introvertartist.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Malango AE and also on Instagram. That's where I post all of my daily sketches. Um, questions, if anyone has questions. One thing that I was going to say uh, in terms of keeping it simple, um, one of the things I do in order to keep things simple is I carry around a sketchbook. So I'm usually just, in trying to get out my creative flow, I'll just use a sketchbook, paper and, and pen, paper and pencil. And, and then with getting it out into social media, since my medium right now is just Instagram, it's just using my phone. I take a picture and I upload it to Instagram. So having a sketchbook is a really cool way to you know, keep notes and, and things that inspire you. And then if you run into a hint of inspiration, just sketch it down real quick. So, but uh, with that, thank you guys. Are you doing a lot of reality stuff? Yeah, we have like three projects right now that we're still working on. One's a Civil War project that's pretty cool. It's kind of overly ambitious. No, it's fine if somebody wants to take that on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I have a video I just tweeted out, so we'll, we'll have that connected with this when we put it up. Yeah, the, the other cool thing we're working on is um, a Halloween like greeting card. Well, a Halloween card. So there's like a pumpkin. You'll probably be getting one in the mail. Because I'm <laughs> trying to That'd be amazing for like wedding invitations and stuff too. I know. If I ever decide to go on Shark Tank, oh, Mr. O'Leary yeah. is my guy. I'll tell you guys about Pumpkin. <laughs> so technically, does that recognize something on the poster? What? How the augmented tracks. Oh, yeah. So the, the program is tracking what's on the poster. So it's picking up this logo right here as the track points. We tried to add other track points so that if you didn't move too far off, it would, the image would go off. But right now it's tracking that point. So hypothetically, um, anywhere where that image comes up, we would be able to see. So you could cut that out, put it on a sticker, slap it on the wall, and it should like throw that poster on the wall. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, t-shirt. Mm -hmm. That could be a lot of fun. Uh, what, what's the name of that tool again? Uh, the tool that we're using, uh, let me make sure I get it right. It's, pre it's called V-U-F-O-R-I-A, Vuforia. Uh, what's that for the F-U, or V-U-F-O-R-I-A.